Hello, hello everyone. Thanks so much for coming in tonight. Uh, we are working on block 78 of the Splendid Sampler tonight. It is new block day, new block Thursday. Uh, thanks to Replay viewers for watching. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching there as well. Uh, to follow live, I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central on Facebook Live. Just uh, like Penguin and Fish, and uh, I'll show up in your timeline, guys. All right, let's get going. I'm going to flip you around, and we'll get started. I got some of my fabrics picked out. I'm ready to go. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming in. I sure do appreciate it. It is new block. Thursday for the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. It's another piece to block. It's awfully cute. It looks fun. There is a neat technique in here for flying geese block, um, for the flying geese, which is where we have uh, our two little squares and a rectangle. There's a no waste way of doing that. Uh, and I think we'll get, that to, get to that tomorrow night. Oh, I'm going to work on the center of the block and then work outward. So we'll see how far we get tonight. It's pretty cute. I'm excited to work on it. Always fun to start a new block. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a Fabric Designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, and we are working on the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. You can find out more info at thesplendidsampler.com and on the Facebook page for The Splendid Sampler. There's over 22,000 people making this quilt, it seems, so it's pretty, it's been pretty fun to work on it. All right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll start cutting our fabric for the night. All right, guys, here we go. Black 78. So it looks like, I, I read through it a little bit, it looks like we're starting on this center area and kind of working outward. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I have fabric picked out for that. Oops, this guy escaped. Um, and we will just start there. So we, hello, so we're starting with um, block A, or the, the piece A. So we need a two and a half square for piece A. And uh, then we also, for B, these strips around it, these guys right here, are B and we need um, two strips that are one inch by two and a half inches and uh, uh, two strips that are three and a half by one inch. And I was hoping, I found this piece of fabric hiding in my bin and I'm hoping I have enough fabric out of this. So we'll see, we'll have to measure and just see what we got. Um, I don't think this is two inches, no. So I'm gonna have to go see if, if the length is long enough. So we will see, hey Ardra, thanks for coming in. So, all right, and then I thought for these little C pieces, these little kind of like wings or butterflies, I thought I'd do like this little fun, weird pop of red, brown goofiness. I kind of love this fabric. I don't think I'm using it enough in the Splendid Sampler yet, so I thought it'd be a nice little accent triangles on the end of this thing. So I think, I think that's probably where we'll get to tonight. I'm gonna cut and sew as I go. Um, I've only picked out colors for this middle area. Um, we're going to have to pick colors for the rest of it yet. Um, so we'll, we'll work on that um, tomorrow. We'll pick more colors. So let's, let's get started here. Let's start with my two and a half inch square from Fabric A. Hey, Anna from Argentina. Thanks for coming in. All right, so I, I wanted this fabric for that cute little center because I just love this fabric. We haven't used it a lot yet, and it'd be fun to just um, get some of this cute little area. Look, it has little it has little bunnies and squirrels and little birds and stuff all over it. It's just the cutest. So um, I'm going to, I need a two and a half inch square. So that's actually not that big. I, I have a square ruler for it. So we won't be able to get like a whole piece of this. I think I do want some white in it. So I might just kind of angle it, like have um, have all this colorful stuff as half of it and have the white white area for half of it. I think that might be kind of fun. Um, I wonder if there's an area on here where we can get that easily without wasting too much fabric. 
maybe right here. There we go. So here's a little tucked in place. I'm not going to waste as much fabric here. So I like this. I'll get a little bit of the um, uh, busy area and then some of the white area. So all right, I'm going to spray this with starch and press it, and then we will cut it out. So let's go up here. Did you see the book cover? Oh yes, so we so they just released, so this is gonna be part of a book, the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along, uh, which is what we're working on now. It's a hundred blocks, and they are turning it into a book, and the book cover, even though we're not done with the quilt along yet, the book cover was just released, and it has some of the blocks that we haven't done yet on the cover. Um, these are mystery blocks, so we don't know what we are getting until Thursdays and Sundays when new blocks are released. And the cover of the book was, was released with a few blocks that we haven't, haven't had yet, so it was kind of a neat little preview of what's to come. I know there's, there's two for sure. I think this one was on the cover too, if I remember. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to tell with the pieced ones, but uh, there was a bird on there that I'm pretty excited. Yes, the bird! Yes, the bird and the bird. Um, you saw at least three new ones. There was also one that had some circles and then like some bias tape or something swirling around. Uh, that one we definitely did not do yet. Um, so that was, that's kind of exciting. I can't wait to, uh, to see some of those new ones. It's always fun. That was a neat sneak peek, for sure. All right, that's a pretty good scrap. All right, I'm gonna rotate this around. And we will cut the other side. So this is a two and a half inch square. We are, we're cutting the two and a half inches for this centerpiece. Again, it's always smaller than I expect these pieces. In my head, uh, looking at the design, it's, it's way bigger, but nope. Cityscape, oh, I didn't, oh, I'll, I'll have to look at it again. I didn't see a cityscape, I'll have to, I guess I didn't spend that much time with it, but I definitely, the bird definitely caught my eye, although I love animal anything, so makes sense. That's just like my eye went right to that. Okay. That's pretty cute. We have a little bit of all this, you know, feathery, leafy stuff, but I do like these little dots with the white. I think that's going to be cute. So next, uh, what's going to frame this is this really pretty light blue. And then um, the lower left, okay, I'll have to peek again. And then this is what we're gonna do, like just like tiny little pops of, you know, the triangles right in the corner there. So this is, this is what we're doing for the center area. So let's cut, let's see if we have enough fabric out of this strip for um, these side pieces. So we need two that are um, one inch by two and a half inches and uh, um, one inch, two of them that are one inch by three and a half inches. So I think I'm just gonna give this all a good spray down first. Um, again, oh, birds just hate you. Oh, that's sad. I just wanna love them back if they don't like me. No fun. I always thought it'd be fun to have like, have canaries or something, like those really pretty, those, have you seen those bright orange, like almost neon orange red canaries? They're probably called red canaries, I, I'm not sure. But I always thought those were so cool and it'd be just fun to wake up in the morning with them chirping and I don't know. I always thought that would be pretty neat. Let me just flip this around and just the other side. So this is actually a boutique um, fabric, which means it's been... Uh, it's just like a light colored fabric that's been dyed. So it looks wrinkly. Like it looks like it has all these wrinkles, but that is part of, that's the design on it. So it's kind of funny. It's a little misleading. Um, you know, we're pressing it, but we're not getting the wrinkles out because the wrinkles are actually a design. It is flat. It just doesn't look like it. So, all right, let's, um, I think, First, let's get a good straight edge on this thing. I think that's probably a good place to, well, it's pretty long. Why don't we, I think I'm gonna cut a straight edge here and then um, cross cut and then we'll have to trim off both sides. I think that might be a way to do this. I'm not sure if that's the best way of doing that, but we're gonna give it a try. Um, 
I'm going to just assume one of these edges is straight. How about that for now? Hey, you know what? I'm going to cut this straight edge. I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to fold it in half. I'm not sure if that's a good idea either. Fine, we'll just cut a normal straight edge. I'm trying to work it out in my head. I don't usually start with a piece this big or um, this skinny, but I do like um, I do like having a straight edge to work from. And clearly, you know, some are wider and it gets thinner and stuff, so it's good. We need to straight edge it. <laughs> I can never talk, uh, talk when I cut, I get, I get all, uh, nervous. So let's just, uh, try and continue to the edge here. So I'm going to line up the ruler on the straight edge that we already did just now to, my ruler wasn't long enough. My ruler and my cutting board weren't long enough. There we go. Let's just finish this up. I think that'll do. Oops. There we go. You fold. I was a little nervous on folding because I needed that straight edge for the whole thing, but I don't know. Folding, that would have probably been the smart way to do it. But there, now I have this straight edge, and now I feel a little bit more confident about, now I can line the ruler up on that straight edge, and I can get um, a square 90-degree angle cut out of this. There. Now I know that's a nice... A nice square cut. Um, we'll, we'll have to cut this other side yet too, but I thought I'd do these cross cuts first. So, all right, we need two that are two and a half inches long. So let's do that first. Here's a two and a half. Let's square it up. So the top side now is the part that's a good straight cut. There we go, two and a half inches. You know what? What I should have done? Um, I could fold this. Maybe I'll do that yet. So I messed it up with this one. So let me just cut one more two and a half inch piece, but I'm going to fold it for the three inch pieces because then I only have to do one cut, right? So, all right. Let's just go like this. Um, I'll have to cut another straight edge on there. So I'm going to just go like that. There's plenty of this fabric, so I'm, I'm happy that turned out. And cut the straight edge. Oops, that doesn't feel right. Okay. And now we need two three and a half inch cuts. So since I laid them on top of each other, I can cut them both at once. wide so let's let's cut this to one inch gosh look how small that strip is the little we're sewing all these tiny tiny pieces for the splendid sampler all right so here are two of our sides and I should have done that with these two because it went much faster um, but let's let's get these two layered on top of each other as best we can. There we go. That's lined up and cut our one inch off of there as well. instructions. I think I'm kind of skipping around 
So um, C and D draw diagonal line. Okay, so I'm kind of skipping ahead. I skipped ahead to the center units, um, the directions for the flying geese units, which is, here's the diagram for that. That actually came first. So really I should have worked on that first, but I just jumped ahead to here. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this part first, just because that's what I'm cutting. Um, so let's do that. We need to sew these two to the sides, and then we need to sew this to the top and the bottom of that. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. We'll jump over to the sewing machine. Here we are. Okay. First, the sides. I suppose we should decide. I think I like it like I think I like it in this direction. So with the right sides together, um, in this case, since this is a batik, um, which is you know like I said, dyed afterwards, the the back and the front are the same, so there's no really uh, no good or bad side. It's a uh, right or wrong side. They're both they're both fine. All right, got that in place. Okay, trying to sew as straight of a line as I can. And then now let's get the other side on there as well. So here's the other side. Again, lining that up. No kidding, there are so many uh, possible crafting emojis and I cannot believe there's not one. It's just Sad, sad, sad. Get together. iPhone and emoji makers. <laughs> like there's there's not even a little scissors, you know? Oh wait, I think there's a scissors, but that's it. There that's like the only thing. They need like a little needle and thread. I think that would be cute. Alright, so let's press this. We need to press it open. So we're gonna jump up here. I know, like a needle or thread or, or anything it makes me sad. So I give it just a press just to kind of set the seam and then I'm gonna press both of them to one side and then I'll press it open. Yes, yeah, an embroidery, hoop, an embroidery hoop would be super awesome. Or like, you know, knitting needles and, yeah, knitting needles and yarn or a crochet hook or anything. They got nothing, I don't like it. Or an iron, even an iron, right? Okay. So I'm gonna press this open, but seriously, like a sewing machine, that seems pretty generic and, I don't know, something people would like to use like me. <laughs> okay, that seems pressed open. Let's do this one. Alrighty. <laughs> a bolt of fabric, that'd be cool. I know, there could be like a whole deck or a whole, uh, whole portfolio of fabric, <laughs> fabric related things. Alright, there we go. That's our first little sewn piece. Now we gotta sew on the top and the bottom. So let's do that. Okay, back to the sewing machine. All the way over here. Okay, so the top and the bottom, we got this piece and then this piece down there. So basically exactly what we just did, uh, just two slightly bigger pieces. All right, gonna line up that edge as best I can. I call this kitty scratching. If you kitty scratch a little bit, um, it'll move the fabric just slightly. So like if you're a little off with your seam, like I want to get those to match up, I'll just kitty scratch. 
top one up a little. All right, I think we're good there. Let's get sewing. Hey guys, thanks for coming. All right. I think these fabrics, this like blue is gonna look really cute with the center. Let's go ahead and do the other side right away. Yes, oh yeah, a little quilt block. See, that would be so sweet. How easy would that be? It'd just be, you know, just adorable, like a cute little uh, uh, star block or something. Yes, we need to design some. I think that'd be cool. I wonder how one would go about doing that. We can like download emojis or something. I would love to, I would totally design some. If people were, uh, like if we're able to, if there's a place to download them or, or you make your own or whatever, I would totally be into that. I may have to look into that. That'd be pretty dang neat. All right, there we are. Let's press these open. Back up here. There we go. All right. I'm just give it a little press again to set the seam. And fold it to one side. Fold it to the other side. Okay, now let's press these guys open, just like how we did last time. <laughs> I don't know about that, if I have the clout to get it done, but I did, um, I know how to draw and use a computer to draw it, so that, that would be fun. I would totally have fun to, to do that. There's gotta be a way to like make some and then you know like an app where you can download them or something like that. I don't know. I'm gonna look into it now. Oh you can cast it to the TV to watch it bigger. That's hilarious. Oh god I hope it's not too big. That's kind of scary. Giant hands my giant giant hands and face. <laughs> but yeah I think uh I'm like in Facebook Live. It's a little funny for um, to have it on YouTube because it's at this square format. But uh, other than that, I definitely think it's pretty easy, easy, easy to watch, easy to use. Everyone's on Facebook, so I don't know. We're giving it a go. I'm liking it so far. Oh, look how cute this is! Just framed in that blue. I kind of love it. I would just. I would like a black just like this. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep moving. So let's let's maybe read some instructions now. I'm kind of skipping the instructions, and I'm already I'm already doing it wrong. I already skipped the flying geese part. So let's uh, let's just kind of read read the center unit. Okay, so the B to the A's. We kind of did that. Press seams open. Okay, that's how far we got. Okay, place a C fabric. The C fabric is eight squares that are one and a half inches. On each corner of the center unit, right sides together, pin in place. Sew on drawn line. Okay, I think down here we drew on the line. Cut a quarter inch. Okay, I got it. But first we gotta cut, um, let's cut eight squares that are one and a half inches. I don't always do it this way. Sometimes I'll cut everything all at once and then, then sew all at once and press all at once, but I'm kind of cutting and sewing as I go just because I'm feeling like I want to get, I want to see stuff done right away, you know? Sometimes, sometimes you feel like you want to prep and get all your ducks in a row and everything, but other times it's just like, I just want to sew and finish something. So it, it makes me happy to, to see this already versus a ton of cut pieces. All right, so if I need eight that are, um, one and a half inches, so I'll need 
um, eight plus four, so I'll need a 12 inch, a 12 inch strip that I can cross cut is probably how I'm gonna, how I'm thinking about this. So let's see if this is 12 inches, I think it, I think it is. Oh yeah, it's just, just about right. You know what, let's give it a press and um, keeping it fresh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, trying things out, trying to make it work, make it work, make it easier. That's what I'm trying to do, make it easier for everyone. Let's get a little more on the edge since that's where I'll be. I don't really need all this starch, I don't, I kind of don't know what I'm doing. I kind of maybe just like spraying it. I don't know, I like the smell, I like the sizzle, I like the steam that comes off of the fabric. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Do I really need starch on this for this? Probably not. Although we are cutting these into triangles, we're sewing on the bias, and the bias is the diagonal line, um, so it's woven this way and this way. The diagonal of fabric is the bias, and it's super stretchy, and um, to help with that stretch, so it doesn't stretch as much, I think uh, the starch is probably a good idea. So more than just for fun. All right, I'm gonna cut a straight edge here first just to take care of all these goobers on the side and to um, get a nice straight edge. Since our pieces are so small that we're cutting, um, there's more of a need, I think, to be ex more exact with your cutting versus like if you had a bunch of five inch squares or something, you know, that you're sewing together. Okay, these need to be one and a half inches. So let's just get a ruler up here for one and a half. I just get a little nervous with measuring and cutting. The entire process, I, I'm liking going through this entire process too. Uh, you know, I know these are super long and it takes days to get it done, but sometimes you just want to see all of it, you know? All right, one and a half inches. I'm going to cut this whole strip. It's kind of funny, look, we got it right on this kind of uh, honeycomb pattern on accident, which is kind of neat. Not that it's going to matter, we're going to cut that all up, but still, I like that idea. All right, done with that fabric. Let's cross cut these into one and a half inch strips. And you know what? I think I'm going to do that same thing. Let's fold it in half and cut four out of these. I'm going to get a nice straight edge first. You know, really, I could probably fold it in half again. You know what? Maybe I will. But zoop, zoop. Now I only need to cut two. I do need to get the edge first. All right, let's just get it about right there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn it around. Oh, I had that rotating cutting board, but all right. Oh well, we're fine. Okay, now one and a half inches twice, and we should have our eight pieces. Whew, that's gonna go so much faster uh, now that we folded it. That was good, good thought. Thanks for the suggestion. Folding is, I just never think of that, but man, when I do it, it's so much faster, right? There we go. This was just enough. So we should have eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think right now we only need four. So I'm going to um, put some of these to the side. Let's switch these off right here. Okay. I need to draw diagonal lines on all these now because um, we are gonna we're gonna place these in the corner and we're gonna sew we're gonna sew on the diagonal and I'm gonna just draw a line on there just to make it easy to sew and then it will end up just like that so we'll have four corners in this goofy kind of brown red fabric 
which is a little silly, but I think it'll pop. If I keep with blues and everything for, for the rest of it, blues and whites for the rest of it, I think these oddball ones will pop and be kind of interesting. So that's, that's my hope, at least. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to draw a diagonal. Oh, wait, you know what? You know what we did last time instead of drawing a diagonal? We, um, we just folded these instead and creased it and followed the crease. I think let's do that again instead of, uh, instead of drawing. So I'm going to just give these a little crease. There, now I can just follow that folded edge. Let's see how that works uh, before, before going too much farther. All right, let's so. All right, another thing we need to look at when we're sewing these blocks is the diagonal. When we're sewing this diagonal, if we sew in the bottom piece well, um, the diagonal should go right through this point right here, um, which will, uh, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't end up down here like, like this, or if that's too far, but like this, you know, we don't want to clip we don't want to clip our point off, and if we're too far up here, you know, then our we're not our thing's not touching it. So we do want to end up with that our diagonal ending up right on that point, which it should, by the nature of you know the size of the square we cut. You know, it, as long as we line these up, it should be should be fine. And you can throw a pin through the diagonal and through the corner there if you want to be exact, but Meh, this is good enough for me. So let's do that. Some people are, really want those things to match up, and if that's the case, then throw a pin through both of them to make sure that it's lined up. But again, I'm just, this is fine with me. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna also grab my little stiletto. I like the, I like the pointy little stiletto for these diagonal lines just to hold them down in there just to get things started. All right, I'm sewing on that fold that we made. All right, and put, do the little, you know what, I'm gonna cut this, cut this and use it as a new, a new leader here. There we are. Okay, so we'll sew the other ones on right away, but I just want to see how this how, how this turned out. So we'll we'll press that up, and yeah, did pretty decent. We see kind of a little bit uh, of a point in there. I think I clipped it a little bit, but I'm perfectly fine with that. So let's uh, let's just keep going, and I'll I'll press these all at once. So let's do these other corners. So I'm going to do that little fold in it again. I think we did it this way, yeah. I think that worked well instead of drawing it on with a pencil. Just quicker. I'm trying not to stretch it. This is the really stretchy part of the fabric when you um, are at a diagonal like this. So I'm trying not to stretch it too much while I, um, while I fold it. place again. All right, let's do this second one. Looks good. So to the right of the line. Oh, just a hair to the right of the line? Okay. Yeah, because that'll, that's a good idea. That'll help me make up for the thickness of the fabric. So right to the right of the line I go. To the best I can. Not always the best at sewing straight, but there we go, slightly to the right. Oop. There we go. Let's see how that how we did this time. Oh, look! I I got the corner there. Oh well, that'll be fine. That'll be coming off. Oh yeah, that's definitely better. Look, it's right exactly on that point. Woohoo! Perfect. Love it. All right, so here's how we're looking so far. Let's do the other two. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 
hold our little um, diagonal again. Lots of pause. Again, I'm trying not to stretch this. I think this is gonna be so cute. I like these colors already. <laughs> right sides together. Oh, whoops! I I did the I did the fold the other angle. I'm gonna I folded it the other direction. I kind of want it this way instead. There we go. That's better. Okay. Let's just stretch again these lights. All right. I'll so hair right to that line again. All right. I'm ready. Oops, it's a little hard to see the fold this time. I don't think I folded it enough. I couldn't really see what I was doing, I, so I just aimed aimed for the diagonal. I think we'll be okay. Yep, great. It's great. So let's do the last one. Okay, we're gonna fold down the middle again. Maybe a little bit better of a fold because I couldn't see it very well last time. It's a little more difficult because it, it it's so patterny this uh, this fabric design. It's a little more difficult to see my tiny little fold line. All right, scratching it into place. Looks good there. All right. Oops, I got a little off there. Well, that one might have been a little wonky, but I think we'll be okay again. All right, done with the art. Uh, yep, I maybe was a little too far up on that one, but that's okay. We can, by when we press it, we can kind of fudge that a little bit. Like I can press it with a little bit of a fold there to fake it like we like we got it right on there. So all right, let's press all these. I'm gonna press them first. You know, I used to just cut them off right away because we're gonna ultimately cut cut a seam allowance here. Um, I used to cut them off because it was easy at this point, at this stage just to trim them all and then press them up. But my mom said that the better way to do it is um, to press it up with this piece on still because then I can use these edges as a guide for where to press this triangle to make a nicer square. So I'm, I'm going to actually use these edges to kind of guide where I press. Um, and then after I press up, then I'll, then I'll trim it off. So that's the plan. All right, let's do that. So first I'm going to just give them all a press flat like this, just to kind of Set the seams again and heat up the seams. Okay, now we'll go around one at a time. I kind of, I find it kind of easier to do to sew and press one at a time instead of having all these things, but um, I don't know, this way sometimes faster. So all right, so I lined up the edges, just kind of finger pressed it in place, and now I'll press right on top. There we are. That's what moms are good for, right? Great advice. <laughs> and now let's let's keep going around. I was like, wow, that's such a good idea when she told me that. All right, this one I have to almost stretch a little because this is the one I think that I sewed a little too close. So kind of stretching it a little bit to match. Oh, 
although Food Block Thursday means the week's almost done, which is crazy. The weeks are just going by so fast. It's going to be um, like winter soon. It's crazy. Um, mostly, Cora, I switched to Facebook Live. Um, well, like the catalyst, I'd say, is that Periscope did another update, and it flips. Like whenever I'm in the horizontal, it flips it to vertical. So I can't go straight down anymore, which, which uh, you know, I can't go like this. Uh, without it flipping, uh, which for me is a big problem because I need to go straight down like this. And you know what? Facebook Live, um, when it started, it wasn't, you know, as nice as it is now. So I think it's just, it's kind of time, I think. I don't know. It's just, um, I probably wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for that weird Periscope thing happening. But I do think there's more, like, it's easier for you guys, I think, uh, just to, to get... Facebook Live, so I mean that's a good enough reason for me. So now I'm cutting um, a, a quarter inch away from that seam after we pressed it. Oh god, Thanksgiving in two weeks, that's true, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I have not thought that far ahead. It's just, I just, I just can't do it. All right, two more. Alrighty, so I'm going to just give that one more quick press and we'll see where we are at. I might just call it a night at this because this is kind of, I don't know, this kind of seems like a good good stopping point. Um, we'll look at the directions. Maybe I can cut a little bit more tonight so we can just get um, sewing right away tomorrow. You know, here's where I should steam it down, but oh well. Here, why don't we, let's... Let's spritz it down again, like we did. Uh, I think we did that last night. Get it nice and flat. Get some starch. Starch is kind of acting as my as my steam. Yeah, I think I think this red will pop out in a kind of a weird, interesting way. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. And you know, we have more of this red in the quilt, so it's not going to be so awkward. Cause like right now it looks kind of crazy, but I think um in the quilt it'll look. I think I like in this direction. In the quilt, I think it'll look okay. So let's let's see what we got so far. All right, here is our centerpiece. Oh, Bonnie Hunter. Oh, she went to she went to live Facebook Live too. I think that is um, the trend. You know, I tried to stay on face or on a Periscope, but you know, if they're gonna keep changing things in a weird way, I can't. You know. Can't deal with that forever. Kind of a bummer. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do tomorrow is uh, we're going to make all of these flying geese. So look, this is pretty interesting. So we already have these four cut. I think those are our remaining um, four pieces when we cut eight pieces. And look, it looks like we just get a, a square and uh, put them in the corners cut it in half, and look, we'll have these weird little um, fox-looking things, like they look like little ears. And then we, on each of them, we throw another one, and wow, look, then we have magic flying geese. So that's kind of exciting. Um, so we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. I don't think we have quite enough time tonight to do that, but I think, uh, based on this, I think that's going to go really quick tomorrow, and then, um, so those are these pieces, so then we just need to make these little little tick mark guys. Oh, you know what? I think these are, these are the other, that's what these are. These are the other little red marks here. So these, we have to cut these um, tomorrow yet. So I think, I think we'll just end it there for the night. Oh, and look, that's, that's the layout here. Um, I kind of like this way of cutting and sewing as we go. I feel like we get, we get something done. We get a physical thing when we're done, even though we don't have all the little pieces ready, which I do like things, uh, having things ready, but, um, oh, you look, but you don't get notified? Oh, yeah, so I think you can set notifications per person, or I don't know, something like that. I think you can tell it that, um, I think actually while I'm live here, you might be able to tell it, like if you hit the button in the corner, it might say, like, get notifications for this person, something like that. Um, I'll have to look into it. Um, I'll let you know tomorrow. But yeah, so tomorrow we'll cut 
we have to cut our flying geese pieces and uh, this little square corner. So we'll cut, maybe we'll cut everything, um, all the rest of it, and uh, we'll do the flying geese. And uh, we might be close to getting it done tomorrow. Um, I think we'll get at least all of these pieces and these pieces sewn. Um, at worst, on a Saturday, we'll just have to do this final bit. And I think we'll have time maybe even for um, working on some other blocks, <laughs> finishing up some of the 18 that I don't have done yet. So, all right, I'm going to leave it there for tonight. I'm going to flip you guys around, and uh, we'll call it an evening. Hello. Thanks so much for coming in, you guys. Uh, here's what we did. I'm liking it so far. I think it's I think it's sweet. I really like these colors with this. This is kind of crazy, but I think it's all going to work. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we'll get a better sense. Um, we'll have to pick, I haven't even picked fabric for any of this outside stuff, so maybe we'll pick fabric together. That'd be kind of fun. Um, we'll, so we'll pick fabric for these outside bar parts and get sewn again tomorrow. Uh, so again, this is block 78 of the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. You can get more info on the Splendid Sampler. It's free right now at thesplendidsampler.com. Uh, feel free to sew with me in the evenings. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, so once I'm done here, you'll be able to do the replay on Facebook Live if you want to uh, look back at how we did something. And I'll also put it on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. So thanks again, guys. I sure do appreciate you being here, and thanks for uh, letting me try out Facebook Live again and bearing with me. Uh, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work for us. So, <laughs> All right. Oh, my brother just joined. Sorry, leaving Justin. Bye. <laughs> thanks again, guys. See you tomorrow.